So with this whole Israel and uh, Palestine thing that no one cares about, like if you're in America and you're concerned about it, you're stupid. You're just dumb. We have our own issues. If we're perfect as a country, like if we're perfect, then you can start you know, worrying about that other stuff. But we're not even close to perfect. And for some reason, whenever there's a conflict outside of the country or just something that people can get their panties in a wad with, they naturally do it. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. That being said, there is some weird stuff going on in the country in regards to the Israel-Palestine stuff because people are putting their noses where they just don't belong. I mean, look at these college campuses where people are just going at each other. Let me just make sure I'm on the same page as everyone here. You're paying like 50 to 70 grand to go to this college and what you're doing in your free time is essentially trying to bully other people that also pay that amount of money to go to that school over a conflict that has absolutely nothing to do with you other than your race. Can I just say something for the people who are, um, not true Americans. And what I mean by that is people like to sit there and say, well, I'm from Israel. I'm from Palestine. Where are you from, man? Well, I don't know. My ancestors are from Germany, Ireland, Poland. A little bit of Native American in me. That's not the correct answer. Did you come from there? I am an American. Do you think I give a f what's going on in Germany? Oh, well, you should. I mean, that's where your ancestors are from. I literally could give two sh like if there was a whole big German slash Irish like race war type of thing, I'd just be sitting back like, all right, what's going on in America today? F them. But no, this is where we're at, especially at college campuses. So there's this dude who drives around, I think it's Harvard, with a truck where essentially he's just sitting there exposing people who were anti-Semites. And, uh, and that means you just don't like Jewish people. I mean, look, everyone's entitled to their own opinion, but you must not have a lot going on in your life if you sit there and just have that much hate in your heart or sit there and like, Oh my God, Jewish people. We gotta go over there and protest and all this other stuff. Like, don't you have stuff to do? But this guy with this truck just drives around and essentially just exposes these people. Some people are calling it doxing. I think the whole thing's a little melodramatic. Who really gives a shit? I mean, it's the identical situation to like Black Lives Matter trying to expose some like white racist people. Who cares? If they aren't at your front doorstep trying to harm your family, who cares? Anyways, this dude's been getting a lot of attention to the point where I'm pretty sure he's got the cops called on him. Um, he did an interview on Fox News. Ten of the organizations withdrew from the proclamation at Harvard, and we immediately took the names off our website, took down their websites, and took them off the truck. Individually, members are contacting me left and right to make sure that they don't get targeted. Clearly, these cockroaches scatter whenever you shine a light on them. I might not want to use the term cockroaches, but they're they're very messed up people, that's for sure. And then the other day, the police thought this guy was a huge problem to the point where they got a SWAT team and they just raided this dude's house. A big thanks to Blackout Coffee for sponsoring today's video. I think it's extremely important that we support companies who truly have solid American principles. That's Blackout Coffee. Amazing coffee. I got all mine stacked up right there. My favorite by far is Brutal Awakening. I'm a dark roast kind of guy, but they have a bunch of different flavored coffee. And even better than that, for every bag they sell, they send two cups of coffee to our active troops. They roast everything in-house. Amazing business. So go grab some amazing coffee, some awesome gear. They have a bunch of different shirts. I'm gonna put the discount code below the video. Go grab some awesome stuff. All right, so we see one guy just walking through this dude's yard. You didn't figure you could just knock on the door, say, hey, look, we're here to check you out. Make sure your uh, truck you're driving is in compliance with, I don't know, the first amendment. That's what we're talking about here. This guy's actively participating in the first amendment and somehow the police are, are busy with this going to this dude's house. And what happens next is probably one of the most stupid and shocking things I've 
ever seen. And this should prepare a lot of people who have these smart homes where you got a doorbell where you just put in a code and it unlocks your whole house and whoever put in the code pretty much owns it. Holy Jesus. What is that? What the f is that? What is that private pile? Sir, jelly donuts, sir. Oh, you didn't even want to knock to see if he's home? What if someone was in there? What if his girlfriend was in there? Maybe walking down the stairs, just got out of the shower. I walk around naked in my house sometimes. What do you do then? I just want to make sure I'm on the same page as these cops. So let me, let me get this right. Somehow, you guys were able to get the code for this dude's house. How? I think what we're dealing with is a little bit of a Liberty Safe situation here. You guys probably called the security company or whoever makes these locks and said, hey, we have a search warrant for this house. And unfortunately, the dude is not home. If he was home, we wouldn't be calling. Yeah, bullshit. But we need the code to this dude's door. And you know what they probably did? They were probably like, oh yes, sir. Oh man, that sounds serious. Here's your code. Now on my house, unfortunately, whoever built it put in one of these smart locks on my front door. Guess what? Now I don't use it. I don't use my front door ever. I got three locks on it just in case of this. Yeah, go ahead, put your code in. Put your code in, man. Have fun getting through a metal door with three locks on it. So then they decide to make entry and now I have another question. Sheriff's office. Sheriff's office. If you know the dude's not there, you got his code, why are you ready to just blow someone's head off? Like you're ready. Maybe you guys are ready for a dog to pop out, maybe follow in the ATF's footsteps. Oh yeah, f the packages. I mean, those aren't important to anyone. Just trample those things as you make entry into this dude's house, please. You know what, that's not enough. Why don't you just kick it across the room? That way everyone can hear it, please. If you were expecting or thinking somebody may be home, probably the best course of action is to knock, right? Because if someone opens my door and has the code to my door and I didn't lock anything else and they just walk into my house, you're gonna have about two seconds to turn your ass around and jump into my bushes before you get a slug to the chest. This is outrageous. I gotta say very eye-opening to how these technology companies work with law enforcement. The last thing I'm gonna say is, can you imagine if this dude just had a whole bunch of guns in his house? What do you think they would have done? If they're willing to make entry, essentially a no-knock warrant, they got the code to this dude's house, they probably would have purged it. <sighs>